all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back to back update and information i see the hot uh, in case you have not joined our social media handle what are you waiting for you don't shell it um within the column that man will be still the call if i need your for uh we say nine be the barrister two months in and the canon or madike one of the people don't come out to, to attack uh, the prime minister of the biafra republic government in exile make i bring you the full detail of the information make you see within that opata man the yan uh, the yan about mass simon eba yeah, but one thing that is sure is that only chineke brilliant, no, chineke brilliant, no. Okay, ba, chineke brilliant again, no. Eh, the only prayer for to give, eh, makana. You know when Moses eh, was fighting for the children of Israel. First of all, eh, you only the familiar with the Bible. Eh, well, can you? If you're a true Biafran, if you're a true Biafran, you're supposed to know the Torah from beginning to the end, or you can also call it the Old Testament. But eh, those of us that did. Uh, religion in school, we know that it is called Torah. There is also another one that is called the Pentateuch. That's, that's a collection of the Old Testament and how the Old Testament was wrote, who wrote and, you know, who, you know, uh, was there when it was written. That's what is called Pentateuch. That's in school, you will see that one. Now, when Moses, first of all, Moses came out to, you know, felt that if he killed an Egyptian, that um, the Israelites, we believe that God has sent him uh, to deliver them, uh, deliver them out of the land of Egypt. When, Mo when Moses killed an Egyptian, uh, the people did not believe because some people, the Bible says, some people who were also who hated Moses and others who were also uh, against their brothers. And then Anna bribe those who they collect money from behind say, Moses, uh, you have killed an Egyptian and you want to kill us. Bible record that those we are those who are fighting their own brothers and Moses ran away. But later on, he came back and he started fighting. So, the same thing I think is the same thing that is repeating itself wherever he is. Maybe many people might rise against him and say, Yes, he's not the savior, he's not going to bring the people of uh, Biafran to their promised land. Uh, but one thing about life is consistency. Uh, make I carry you go for that information. You know, say now this uh, <laughs> now why you go the day for my channel because uh, me I they like to take my time to coache some things for you and uh, make you understand how matters they be. They say find your job for the attorney for the indigenous people of Biafra leader Mazin and the Kano has disclosed that criminals in Southeast have turned to fabricating lies and making up stories in order to stay relevant. <laughs> He said that Simon Eber's criminality has not only been exposed and ended by Nam the Canon's handwritten note calling for an end to sit at home order being imposed in the Southeast, but it has also rattled him into desperately spreading grievous fabrication and false narratives to remain relevant. The IPOB lawyer said in a statement he signed and made available to the press on Tuesday. According to Age of Four, now the canons has written message put a quick hand to the illegal activity demonstrated that fate is beyond human control. He urged all supporters and followers of Kano to distance themselves from criminality and adhere to the guidelines stipulated by the IPOB leader. The statement reads, A complete and total end to the criminality of a rogue who operates from a far away Finland by a mere handwritten note of about 50 words by Onyondu Mazinandekano is enough proof that, this, that there is no competition in destiny. Sit at home is dead today because Onyondu Mazinandekano said so. Wonders of the handwritten note. The senseless sit at home completely stopped from the moment Onyondu's handwritten note was published. The criminal proponent of sit at home in Finland goes to work every Monday if at all he is meaningfully engaged, and his child that he had with a Finnish lady goes to school every Monday. But children in Iboland are prevented from going to school on Mondays, and parents are prevented from going out to seek for their livelihoods to feed their families, particularly in this period of unimaginable economic hardship. What type of hypocrisy? And wickedness. 
The IPOB lawyer further added that his client Namde Kano demonstrated abiding law for his people by ending the troublesome sit at home which the Southeast governors could not store for two years. He took only a handwritten note of about 50 words to end the criminality of a rogue in faraway Finland, Ejofo added. Ejofo is the one saying all these things. This is proof that had Onion Duma Zinan the Kano been released before now, in line with the appellate court judgment, all the tragic and unfortunate death and needless destruction recorded over the past turbulent two years in Igbo land would have been averted because his endeared people listened to him. Finally, if the level of peace can be achieved with a man written note from solitary confinement in the SSS Gulag, imagine what Onyendu's physical presence will accomplish. This goes to show that those behind the insecurity in the southeast and benefiting from same are the same people obstructing the release of Onyendu Mazi Namde Kano. And uh, I'm uh, waiting for the column. Uh, 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 for, now in the talk this one, <laughs> uh, you know, say talk now free, uh, people are free to say what they want uh, because talk is free. Meanwhile, make a carry you go to Imo State, make you see what in the sub because of Wolo, Wolo Don Shelley. <laughs> they say land allocation, Imo community in die to cross child. <laughs> uh, they say, or guy who puts a demo now, they collect back the land where we saw Korocha and his people collect from Ndimo. <laughs> Uh, this one we all know saying a politics so because some um, uh, politics is coming. You no, know, uh, September is here. I've been November where we say they go do uh, emo gubernatorial election, and um, Oga Hope is doing everything he's, he can uh, to make sure that he will get the favor of the people. Uh, but I will tell Oga Hope to go around them. Um, uh, what is it called? Uh, that road, as Okoroja Road, the road that leads from uh, Amakoya to uh, Oji. You will see that that road is nothing to write home about. That place is messed up. So I think that if we actually want to gain the favor of the people, uh, the, the support of the masses, let him go and fix that particular road and make that place to be better. Then another place is the road that is going to MCC. Yes, that road has been fixed. Uh, but um, uh, if you reach the place that is called, there is a place called Choko Mangmoha. Last time I was in Imo State, uh, that place is very bad, very, very bad. You see that um, if it rains, you will see the kind of um, this flood that normally goes on that area. From that Chokomaonha going to Imsu, that road is about dividing. And if nothing is done, that road will be a mess of itself and um, that road will be destroyed. So I think um, if the governor is actually looking for the favor of the people, uh, he should go there and fix that road. Uh, because these governors have learned that any small thing they do, they will want you to start clapping for them. Meanwhile, they are not doing it with their own father's money. It's not as if they are doing it with their personal money. Now, when Tinubu wanted to enter office, Tinubu's wife said that um, uh, Tinubu is not looking for Nigerians' money, uh, that he, the man already had money. This and that. Now, what is happening? Why not? Why did he remove the subsidy? Since he has money, since he wants to use his money to fix Nigeria, since he's for the Christmas, why not use his money and be paying for the first subsidy? And you can see what these politicians are do doing, that these politicians does not have the interest of the citizens at heart at all. They are just there to do what they want. They know what they are looking for, and what they are looking for is in their pocket. And once they get that thing that is in their pocket, my brother, forget about you and your family, Whatever you and your family are doing, that one on your own. They say a former governor of Imo State, Rocha Sokorocha, was on Tuesday indicted by the committee set up by the Imo State government for the recovery of land belonging to the Avani Koku College of Education, Oweri. The committee said Okorocha used brute force to dispose the college of his land. In the report signed by the chairman, Professor Vitalis Urikeze Ajumbe, and the secretary BF Anyamu and submitted to Governor Hope Uzadema. The committee recommended recovery of the share camp land from Okorocha and his associates within six months and hand same over to the institution. 
The committee regretted that her culture as governor used brute force, including the military and hoodlums, to snatch the land from the college, after which he allocated or so same to his top associates. Those who benefited from the visa and have been similarly asked to vacate the land include two of Okorocha's in-law, Dr. Ozoma Awoka, a former deputy chief of staff to Okorocha, an ex-member of the House of Representatives, Kensley Uju, apart from Okorocha's in-laws, a former Speaker of Imo State House of Assembly, Chief Atro Ihim, the current MD of Imo State Oil Producing Area Development Commission, Chief Charles Ure, Prince Charles Amadi, and Ugochuku Hilary also benefited from the illegal acquisition. The committee regretted that Okorocha ordered demolition of 101 buildings belonging to the staff of the college and thereafter confiscated their property. It therefore urged the Imo State Executive Council to direct the recovery of all the lands belonging to AIFCE Alvan Ikoku Federal College of Education, which are now illegally in the hands of individual and institution. It further asked the state government to ensure the recovery of the land within six months and thereafter issue a certificate of occupancy to the college. The Avani Koku Federal College of Education to take full possession of the vacated land and property immediately upon recovery, while the Commissioner for Lands and Oweri Capital Development Authority should recover the land within six months, to committee recommended. It further recommended that Avani Ikoku Federal College of Education should pay the agreed compensation to the indigents who are the original owners of the land, while the army should vacate the shanties they erected in the land and finally move to Obinze. Responding, Governor Ozadem thanked the committee for doing a thorough job and promised that the state government will take the necessary steps in accordance with due process to implement the committee's recommendation. Nibai, Ogulanoko, and Nono. Que me sean.